for fun, fearless, and factual content. It's barely a week to Ghana decide 2020. We have heard from the NDC, you have heard from the MPP. But what happens to the voter who is demanding an alternative to what has become a political duopoly? Today on Spotlight, we give you some alternatives to different governance uh, perspectives that you, the voter, can choose from. We're going to go for a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be introducing you to the guests we have in-house. Hello, viewers. I'm feeling very frustrated and abhorred in Sambulai. I'm very happy. If you don't understand, don't worry, call me self. I don't understand. In this addition, Vodafone Ghana has now made it possible to send money from Vodafone Cash to all network free. We will cross over. To our senior reporter for more details. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing in front of downtown. You know, uh, oh, I'm learning to get to make a block. I'm all for any other set. What a phone, I'm all for a set. What do you miss? And this is a car to be a Emily to do a be a. I go all the network. I will check up there with the same one. So, yeah, I'm all for any. Fifia, but then those cells don't need to charge this man on me. For me, I do a lot of online transactions. <laughs> See, the excitement for me is that I get to save a lot on Vodafone Cash. Please put me down. I'm so excited. I can now send money to all networks without any charges. Me ye jedi ni ba. A bibia se se mitia madwuma ye fo kan. Sika mitia se charges no. E do so do do. Na so se se die. Me da Vodafone Cash as. Sending money on Vodafone Cash to all networks is now free. Send any amount of money as many times as you like to all networks for free. Dial star 110 hash now to send money. This is the red news. Uh, apologize. The future is exciting. Ready? Welcome back. You're still watching Spotlight. Uh, today we are discussing alternatives to NPP and NDC, third party and independent political candidates, and what they have to offer in terms of policy alternatives uh, concerning the major areas that matter to you. We have in the studio uh, Hassan Ayariga from the APC party. We also have Kofi Apalu from the LPG party. They are going to be talking to you about how they will address varying governance issues. Uh, Honorables, you're welcome to Spotlight. Thank you. Before we started, in fact, we had uh, Alfred Walker. He was going to join us. Unfortunately, when I called him this afternoon, he said he had been involved in an accident. And then we talk, talked about uh, the rampant accidents on the roads. So I wanted to find out if you have been experiencing similar on the roads, Mr. Ayariga. Yes, uh, almost every time. As you crisscross around the, uh, the country, uh, we've had several accidents, four times so far. Four accidents? Four accidents. We've damaged about six cars. Oh, and, um, this is capital intensive. Yes. In a, I mean, running for presidency is not a, a joke. It involves a lot of money. It involves a lot of attention. But do, do, does this, do you lose any, you've not lost any lives? No, 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 no. These are just a um, mere ac accident from... Uh, the drivers' carelessness, some of them, and then so sometimes to um, 
other drivers. Mm. Well, in Ghana, when you are driving, you drive for yourself and you drive for another person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't do that, you're going to cause a lot of accidents. So sometimes, and because of the length of the convoy, you get into places that people do not even want to give you space. And mm. by so doing, you get hooked up one way or the other, and then boom, the accident happens. But, but have you considered reducing the length of the convoy? Depending on where you go and the length of the convoy. Sometimes if you are within town, the convoy can reduce to seven. Mm. But when you're out of town, then you have to meet with the regional and national, uh, what do you call it, the regional representatives in the regions, and they join up with their vehicles. And sometimes it even goes more than 10. Oh, that's, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Palu, what about you? Have you experienced these accidents? And do you think it has anything to do with the roads? Yes. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, just when I was coming to this place, I uh, had a call that two of my vehicles had involved themselves in an accident and, uh, uh, I mean, we lost one of the cars actually, totally, it has gone totally, so, off totally, so. So you've also lost a few cars to, yeah. to accidents? Oh, yeah. I mean, it happens all the time because you're always on the road uh, doing something and, uh, actually, where this happened? Uh, it was a dusty road and uh, a quantum in the OT region. Okay. And uh, so they couldn't see their way. So clear. for you, it's more of the, the condition of the road? Actually, this is because of the nature of the road. Because the dust on the road was too much and it, it's, it's, it's like uh, a crowded. So they couldn't see uh, the, the cars ahead of them. I like that you bring in roads. Uh, you're, you're running for, for presidency in 2020. What would you do differently about the roads? Uh, I have a plan. That Tell by, us your plan. Yeah, by 2024, we're going to have all our road network fixed. All our road networks? All our road networks. We're going From to every Kulungugu? Corner, everywhere. Everywhere in the country. We'll fix them. Because we don't have uh, the time, okay, to waste. So we have to invest in what? In developing our roads to create jobs and to create work. Building the roads alone, you are creating jobs, okay? The companies that will supply you the materials, the cement, the iron rods, whatever, you are creating jobs. Those who are going to supply food for the workers on the site, you are creating jobs. The vehicles that will be conveying materials, haulage, you are creating jobs. The oil businesses who will be supplying these haulage companies, oil, you are creating jobs. You are sustaining jobs, you are creating jobs. So even the banks who are going to lend the contractors money to go on site, you are creating jobs because you are sustaining jobs. But so, some, something has to finance this uh, huge undertaking. Exactly. Where, we where will the money come from? We will borrow the money. From? We will borrow the money from Bank of Ghana to do that. Okay, so you, you, we've been talking a lot about Ghana debt. Uh, so well, it's, 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 it's not anything. It's just 40 billion dollars it's just a peanut oh, you, by so, your calculation it's just peanut it's just peanut you know you see when you think big and you want to do big stuff you see that 40 billion dollars for a country like so you, Ghana, you're saying by your calculation the road construction from kulungugu hamile down to axim and beyond will cost 40 billion no 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 you you brought in ghana's total debt yes and i'm telling you ghana's total debt is 40 billion dollars but what, so, how much will it cost to construct these roads so? oh we with, with something less than uh, 10 billion dollars we to fix all ghana roads less than 10 billion dollars yeah we'll be to fix all ghana road network okay. so this will come from the bank of ghana yeah we borrow the money from there you already have the money <laughs> They don't have the money but they, you know ghana's expenditure always exceeds no you uh, see the revenue there, anyway. you see that's, that's the problem. When, when you mention, we have what we call recurrent expenditure, and we have what we call investment, okay? That's the capital expenditure. In, when you pick the accounts, okay, of any company or whatsoever, we have the income statement, and then we have the financial position statement. The income statement is the revenue and then the expenses, okay? Are that's, you an accountant? Yes, I am. I have a checked okay. an accountant, you see. So those but you see in ghana we have roads that we constantly maintain every year yeah we so have this to going end up recurring exactly because no you cost... see whether you like it or not you need the roads you need lives you need people to be alive you want all your stuff from the hinterlands to come to the city or come to the market with that good roads how do you uh, send them so you need to face the roads but the truth of the matter is that you need to borrow to invest to develop 
your country so that in the long run this will work to pay back okay now this company you are working uh, with uh, okay i'm coming let me give you a, a scenario this company that you are working with okay the investment the person whoever owns this company invested here to set it up the person is not expecting to get the returns in a, a year no. or maybe six months but all the money whether borrowing or his own equity he has put them together to build this company expecting to get the returns in the future okay so whatever you are doing you have to look beyond today you invest to develop everything and then the thing will give you the returns gradually so when you have good rules in the country one you save lives two you are creating jobs for them and then also we're talking about the maintenance the recurring every year because there will be weather conditions there will be rain season there will be sunny season and then when you have the wet and then the dry season then the road architecture will be changing okay the moisture will but change. you see so, someone would, would uh, say that if we are just going to borrow to solve all the problems uh, that's easy for any party to do oh no is there is there no you see no not everybody have that capacity okay. okay not everybody have that capacity to raise that money okay now let me tell you something uh, when you take a country like uh, italy if you check there you can ask your researchers to just give you how much they owe in total is 2.8 trillion of sustainable U debt us dollars 2.8 trillion us dollars a country like uh, uh, uh italy now if you take the whole of africa including south africa ghana everybody the whole africa our total debt is 1.3 trillion that's where sustainability comes in. no that is why we are poor because they have conscientized us to believe that borrowing is wrong they have conscientized us to believe that when you borrow okay i think are, the argument about borrowing hinges on sustainability like i mentioned uh because if you borrow uh -huh. for for um projects that are not able to sustain themselves which means to pay for themselves yeah, uh, which, 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 in which, the future which, which, that is the bad debt because if your debt is going into exactly. projects that cannot sustain so the, the rules, pay for themselves not so the rules the rules are going to pay uh back how the roads pay pay back the, the okay 10 million because debt, when the productivity when productivity goes up okay when you produce in the villages when you produce everywhere and then uh transaction is moving on you are creating money you are creating wealth so you need a road network to enable you to uh increase uh productivity and also commerce okay trade and industry will grow that is how we build out a country you see we don't look at a country like uh you see, if you're managing a country, you have to take it like you're managing a business entity. That is how it should be in your mind. That I, other than that, you can't run it. Africa, we are where we are. Do you think we can raise some of this money locally, even if not all of it? We can raise everything here. You, what's the plan to raise it here? We, we, we don't have... Yeah, we, revenue. Internal revenue. Yeah, you see... <laughs> oh, no, I'll come to you. <laughs> no, no, I'm coming. Let, let, let me educate, let me educate sure, everybody. please. Okay, I'm talking as an accountant, as a professional person. Okay? I've worked with nothing trust investor services. Okay, you can check. We're talking about trillions entity. Now, with much experience when it comes to finance, let me tell you something. This country that we have, we have our own sovereign money. Mm. That money that we have is uh, this money, at least. Let me pull one. You see this currency here? Mm. Who controls it? Ghana yeah, government. The Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana. Is our, is our, do you know the quantity they have in stock? I have no idea. Okay. Um, Apart from this, this is not the only money. We have different types of money. We have what we call ledger money. Okay. I'm going to give you a small tutorial. Please, don't, don't yeah. educate us. Yeah. <laughs> you have no, an accountant sitting yeah. right here. <laughs> no, we, 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 have, we have what we call ledger money. Okay. When you say ledger money, anytime you go to bank and you want to raise money, mm. The bank will give you a note. And then on that note, they will tell you, oh, you have been approved a loan of whatever amount. And then they give you a letter. Okay? You sign to take it. Mm. Now, they don't give you this paper. So, do you know what the bank has done? The bank has created money. That is money creation. The bank has created money because oh, no, but you see, the you question was how we can raise the money locally. No, I'm, 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 that's, what, that's what I'm telling you. I'm educating you. Uh, are we going to create? No, listen to me. So Bank of Ghana can just put money in an account for you. Okay. So are we just going to print money? 
No, you don't need to print this currency. But what I'm telling you is that the Bank of Ghana can just create money, create a ledger for you, a loan account. Okay. You have the money. Well, and commercial because, banks do the same thing when they, exactly, they create money also. Exactly. So that's what I'm telling you. If I need, if I need uh, trade billion dollars, okay, I don't need to go to China, mm. okay. If I, if I go to China to raise $3 billion, mm -hmm. okay, I should be able to go to Bank of Ghana to get equivalent, which is 18 billion uh, Ghana cities. Okay? They have control over this. And that 18 billion, when they give you, you'll be able to build your economy. You'll be able to buy goods and services here. Now, John Muhammad's time, you know, they build Kumasi uh, Kijit here, they build all, whatever, whatever. Mm. They're all loans, is that not it? But, you know, it didn't have any impact on the economy because... They borrow from China. They borrow from uh, uh, what do you call that place? Uh, Brazil. So they brought all the materials to build whatever they built. So we didn't buy any single item from this country. So, so if you want to build, so that's what you're going if, to do differently. Yes, exactly. Because when I buy locally, when I buy locally, but, my but, contractors, contractors in Ghana, when they buy locally, all the materials because they can get a chipping, they can get everything down here. Okay, and then when you build, you are creating jobs, you are creating wealth in an economy. Mr. Palu, I want you to hold that thought. I just want to uh, go to the, the, the other accountant in the studio. No, Looks you're like... not an accountant. <laughs> no, you, you see, I, when it, you see, I want people to understand this. When you tell you are an accountant, okay, accountants is like a medical doctor. Okay. You cannot just sit somewhere and call yourself a medical doctor when right. you don't belong to an association. You must belong to an association. Okay. Which association does it belong to? Right. Is it CA? Right. Is it ACC? Let's seek his Which opinion one? as an so opposing you see, before you can call yourself candidate. an accountant. You see, before you can call yourself an accountant. That's all right. You Look must at. belong to an association. So, which association does it belong to? Oh, that, which you need to find out. That's okay. The man, Let, let's uh, we'll will, get back will, to that. No. I will not go down the lane. Uh, no, uh, when, when, before you call yourself an accountant. It's all right. We you must tell us. You don't know my background. So, let's seek his opinion as an opposing. President no, candidate. Uh, my, uh, the name of the new Nuang I'm sorry. I, I, it's I'm okay. Not, okay. You know, you see, before you can uh, describe yourself as a poly, uh, as a professional person, okay? Right. You must belong to an association. We we get body, that. A professional body. If you don't belong to a professional body, you can't call yourself. S you sustained. Are. Exactly. Sustained. Now moving on, uh -huh. I'm seeking his opinion as an opposing presidential Be, candidate. I, I don't have a problem. Honorable. But so, those, first of all, what is your plan? Like, plan uh, what is your plan to raise uh, first local? Of all, first of all, let me educate uh, this so-called accountant. <laughs> uh, that if he but doesn't you, know... You, that, you, hold on, when you are talking, when you are talking, hold on, let me listen. That's okay. Let, let me, I did let me ACCA learn. in London. Uh -huh, ACCA in so, London. Uh, Hold on. So, so uh, okay, ACCA. You, see, you so are asking me. What is your number? You are asking me. That's, and I'm, that's, that's okay. Uh, no, what is this say, number? Uh, Mr. Akpalu. Uh, let's, let's finish. I'll come back. I'll uh -huh. come back to you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Akpalu. Oh, Mr. Masa. I am sure Mr. that Mr. if you go and read my background, no, no. What you I'm will realize that, that I went to the London College of Accountancy. No, you did not. Where did you go? No, no. Where school are, did you go? No, no. I mean, I didn't go to school. But Thank I you. I want you to. You, you want to know about my history. Okay. And well, I'm telling you. Look, you let's, let's stay on the sustainable matter. No, uh, we are talking about SCC. how to what, raise what is this number? domestic revenue. Uh -huh. How to raise domestic revenue? Uh, Hassan Ayaga, how will you raise Don't domestic go there. When revenue? Are, when you are not let's trying. assume that we are going to embark on a lot of projects. When did you chatter? Uh, uh, construction projects. When did you chatter? How? Like we've moved on from that subject. Okay. We are talking about how you raise domestic revenue. Yeah. Uh, Honorable, how will you raise uh, domestic revenue? First of all, thank you. Uh, like I said, let me educate this so-called accountant. All that he has said has no basis in accounting. He's just rattling anything. Anybody who's an accountant listening to him would know that he's probably in the primary school trying to educate himself on accountants. You don't sit down and all the facts you give. What part of which mm. basis of the accountant does it qualify? <clears throat> you talk about borrowing. When, an, when a, a country begins to borrow, what it means is financial threat is weak. So you won't borrow? Not at all. The, what it the means that will not borrow? Not at all. How I'm going to educate him. I am going to educate him so that he will go and upgrade his accounting firm. Educate again, all of us. Yes. So, least. you see, in accounting, we have... Uh, what do you call it? The ledger. Can we move from accounting to, to Ghana? Uh, okay, oh, let's, okay, let's move. No, no, to, let's move. No, no, to, no, no, let no, me take. I want to. I want to. I wanted to educate him on something. Yeah. But I will, I will. As I speak, he will. If he understands the accounting terms very well, he will educate himself. If he doesn't, those please, who understand please, will continue. Proceed. Look, a country like Ghana, over the years, 
We've borrowed $39 billion. If he doesn't know, he should know. 71% to GDP. Who shows that we are weak in our region financial to sustainability to be able to improve and build. So you think economy. borrowing means... Borrowing. Like, yeah, borrowing. borrowing it's, a last, it's a last resort to any company that cannot raise, cannot generate finance or general revenue internally. But government after government in Ghana has borrowed. Because they cannot raise revenue internally. When you cannot raise revenue internally, you sort out for borrowing. So what's your approach to My approach, internal revenue? We're talking about roads. You started with the issue of uh, construction of roads. Construction of roads. It's very easy to construct roads. How Over the years, we waste, there's too much wastage. That is why we borrow. We borrow because there's too much corruption. If you look at the 39 billion so far borrowed over the years, mm -hmm. and then you ask all these politicians to tell you where it went to, they are unable to tell you. Because even as we speak now, even within Accra, the roads are bad. As we speak now, even Kumasi, the roads are bad. Not to talk of the hinterland where I come from, Boku, Bolga, Kumasi, and, all, and uh, Tamale, and all those places. The major roads alone is a problem. Internally, community by community, roads are bad. No roads, not to even talk of gutters. That is why there's so much flooding. When it, when it rains 5 minutes, 30 minutes, the whole country is flooded. You know why? So the rain, they, roads, the drainage. They drainage the roads. They, what we do have you do about it? So what we need to do is that the, the private sector is doing so well in terms of infrastructure. And government is not doing anything at all. Private sector, people are building their homes, there are companies all around. All government needs to do, even if we cannot raise internal, we need to tax the people in community by community, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, village by village, state by state. Once people begin to create a normal path, which calls rough road, every household that lives within that community, raising internally, you tax, because you are going to use that road. So once you are on that lane, you are supposed to pay road tax. So we will create offices. So you're going in, to increase the tax burden of. It's not about tax burden. It's not a tax burden. It's an obligation. There's a difference between tax burden and obligation. But we, we already pay. No, no, we are not levies. paying. We are not road paying service. for road levies. We are not. What we pay is toll. The one one city toll that we pay that people do. Nobody pays for road at the moment in the communities we live. In the U.S., where he thinks he has gone to, and everybody pays for road usage. So that's what we will introduce? We will, yes. We will introduce road taxation in community by community. So, all, so let's assume that. Road levies, community by community. By community. So, that so at least the district assembly is taking this? Taking this. we we'll put up an office so that we begin to know that we are responsible for our development. So you decentralize Decentralize road construction. Road construction. And then secondly... Most important thing is that we've been doing asphalt, and that has, what, uh, that has caused the wastage. We have to do concrete roads. I so see. we are going to do concrete roads, two lane, four lane, six lane, linking major cities and towns. Once you do a concrete road, it lasts for 100 years. But, but you see, repeatedly. So you are allowing this man Honorable. to be saying all these things, knowing that, knowing uh, that. Kalu, you cannot, when you were talking, you get, when you were uh, talking, I was, I was, don't, no, no, don't, you, no, no, you, I'm you not. Came uh, in, Mr. You Kalu, came in. You let, let him land and then you can critique uh, it. Okay, because okay, give you me see, a people moment. are listening here, yeah? yes. they are watching, you please. see, they have to take us serious. Mr. As Kalu, people. Mr. Kalu, because as Mr. a people, please, we want to, we want to rule, we want to rule, we want to manage this country. You are sitting here, no, you are sitting here, you are telling the whole world that when you, when you get opportunity, which is unlikely that when you become president, you are going to you are not going to borrow money. You are going to build concrete roads. You are going to do this. My, my sister, we don't use our mouth. Oh. You need Madam, money to do that. Madam, that's uh, did, that's disrespectful. I don't take it. Um, honorable, <laughs> please. Let's, let's no, him, let him apologize. I don't take that let nonsense. Him, honorable, uh, <laughs> let him finish. No, I let point. him remove that. I don't use our let mouth. Him, I'm not. I'm let not. Let no, but you have no, some mouth to say. Things. No, no, no. Please, uh, if you want this. Let's be. Just, I, will, uh, I will walk away. In our approach. Yeah, I walk let's, away. I walk to be away. Let's try to be decorous. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. In I, our walk, I will walk away. So that we can both land for, for the benefit of the, the viewers. viewers. Okay. Yes. Because the you. viewers are the main beneficiary I, I, at the end of I the agree day. With you uh, honorable, you were making a point. No, no, I will not make the point. Constructing roads. I will not make the point. I, I think that this man 
is not qualified to debate me, to sit with me in a program. Exactly. And I have respected yeah. him. Please and he allow him to learn. You know, he, he allowed you to, to learn yeah. earlier before he came uh, in. I, so I, I don't, no, no, I don't think that. About your approach to construction before he came in. So yeah. when he started let talking, him when he yes. started talking, I kept mute. Right. Whether I like his approach or not, I, agree. I kept mute. Agreed. I, as people who want to aspire to be president of the Republic of Ghana, Mr. Kalu, must be so you're tolerant. going to let him land. No, listen to me, listen to me. Must be tolerant and respectful and not Agreed. disrespectful. Mr. Ayariga, take, take us through this. Do you have any different opinions or policies concerning education in Ghana? Yeah, I think that um, so far uh, we've been training avoidable graduates, graduates who will only read, write, and pass exams. And we have not trained innovative and creative leaders so far. So you realize that uh, when students come out of school and graduate, um, they, they rush out there looking for jobs instead of they themselves creating jobs. Because our educational sector is supposed to allow our students and our graduates when they come out of school, that they become more creative, innovative in their field of study and learning. Over the years, we've adapted the Nkuruma style, and as century changes, we haven't actually looked at the education sector so well to link up to the industry and the requirement of the Ghanaian people. So over the years, we have produced avoidable graduates instead of uh, observable the, graduates. The, uh, WIAC result, the recent WIAC results, there were actually some very high passes. I'm not talking about, you are not listening to the effect of my message. Yes. All I'm saying is that we are training them to read, write, and pass exams. Yes. But we are not training them to be creative and innovative. So the formal sector is doing much better than the, the informal sector is doing much better than so, we So you are think training. the results have no impact on their creativity? In it's form. not. It's just for them to pass exams. But at the end of the day, when they come out, what do they do? They go around with their certificates looking for jobs instead of getting themselves creating jobs. Let me give an example so that you understand what I'm talking about. If you take the informal sector and you take a mechanic or you take a welder or you take a tailor, a mechanic, after passing out, the next day, he goes to open up a shop, clean the place, buy his equipment, and then he starts doing what? Money, uh, employing others. And he is, becomes a mechanic and he's servicing cars. A welder, after passing, come out, get some small piece of land, clean the place, buy his welding tools. The next day, he's doing gates, doors, he's employed more. So your focus will be on technical? Not only technical and vocational, but we need to be more creative and innovative. So we need to link our Skills educational training. skill training, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, so that we produce graduates that fit into the industry that we're looking for in the 21st okay. century. So, so we graduates need to who start, are more technical and practical. Yes, yeah, so we, we have only graduates, they have a certificate, I'm an accountant. What can he do? He walks around telling rubbish, okay, saying all sorts of things, and he cannot even create jobs. Are you with me? He, does, he doesn't do anything. I'm an engineer. He walks away in town looking for a job to become an engineer. He cannot manufacture even a, a pen. He cannot build. So we, we are practically just holding certificates, but in actual sense, we are not tax trained to the task of becoming better society and building the society. So all we need to do is that I intend to bring a national data system that will capture the de details and information of every Ghanaian. And when we capture that detail from right from the childbirth... We have the MPP working on a, the national identification. That is a That's national identification. They're different from a data system. It's capturing data. Uh, uh, it's actually a measure with the Ghana Post GPS. I mean, these are their policies aimed at capturing data no, no. of the Ghanaian. If the MPP policy is to capture data, has an area policy is to give you a national data system that will register you, your date of birth, your blood sample, your facial recognition, your fingerprint, mm -hmm. your income, where you work, your salary, the amount of money you earn, the number of properties you have, the number of houses you have, who you are married to, how many children you have. All this is not the MPP data. Do they have this data? So listening mm. to my, uh, everybody comes with a different kind of data. So my you're, you're is adding extras. Extras to have everybody's information perfect. The moment you key in, Madame Charlotte or say, 
or Madame Jean Mensa, you have information of Madame Charlotte Osset, right from her date of birth to what she's doing, even currently. You get every information about her, where she works, so that we are going to be able to keep corruption with that kind of data. So if, for instance, you work here, and your salary is 10,000 Ghana cities, but you have a car that, sh in the data, you have a car that shows that you, your car is $200,000, and you did not borrow the money, but you bought it cash. You have a house that's over $1 million, you did not borrow it. So we will have to tell you to see whether it tallies. We have to work to see if it doesn't. You are corrupt. So you have to come and answer to the special prosecutor and the GRA how you raise that money to be able to do all these things. So our data will now give every institution some sequence or some kind of information. So every information will derive its data from us, from the so national data system. central database. Thank you. Now you understand it. So the NIA card is just a card. It has nothing about... Oh, but there's some data behind it. It's not a easy. little. Even the NIA card, we are scrubbing it off and getting the data card. So that data, every Ghanaian will work with that card. Hmm. Every Ghanaian must work with that car. So with the data system, we develop the national development plan. We come in with a new national development plan to link out with the data that you we have. You a national development plan? Exactly. How many years? Oh, every five, ten years we have to look at it, depending on the data system that we have. With the data system, we now build a national development plan to link up to every institution. So that now the educational sector that you are talking about, with our database, we now know that the number of graduates that graduate from school is this and this. Already we have 18,585 primary schools. We have 8,809 senior high schools. So all this data will show. And now we now begin to turn, okay, what do we want to have in the 21st century? What is our plan for the 21st century? We want to build TVs. We want to build radios. Hold, hold the thought. We'll come Let me land. To, to Let me land. One extra, minute. Okay. Let me land. We want to start manufacturing mobile phones and all that. Now, our educational sector will now be linked to that so that kids from the primary school will now start learning how to build radio, television, okay. and that. So that is the so way we have to change. So your data system is identifying the needs. The needs, the ones, the necessary. the country. Everything. And then feeding it into the educational yeah, the system. Sector. So every sector will get a balance of what we want interesting. to do. Very interesting. Uh, Mr. Apalu, <coughs> uh, you, you have heard uh, the... the APC's approach, uh, what is your alternative to the educational system, improving education in Ghana? I know um, you also mentioned that for technical skills, students, uh, for persons who are learning technical skills, you'll be paying uh, their fees for them to their masters, what, what they call uh, to, to <laughs> like for example, if someone's going to learn hairdressing, you yeah. pay their mm. fee. Uh, if someone's going to learn maybe fitting, you, you pay the fee. But what, what, uh, what, does, what is your policy detail to approach education? Let's include the technical skills. Okay. Actually, uh, everything that we are doing, the end resource is creating jobs, creating wealth. If it's not going to create jobs, it's not going to create wealth. We waste our energy. I see. Yeah. So we are looking at adding, combining. JHS and the SHS to become one school. So JHS and SHS will become one school. Uh, we are on the same compound. Okay. Okay. So and you are integrating JHS uh, and, the SHS. and the SHS. So the same three years, three years, but to, to be on the same compound. Is okay. there a goal to this? What's the, what are we trying to achieve? Well, what we are trying to achieve is that we want to reduce the cost of uh, running a secondary education. Okay. Okay. Because when that is done, we don't necessarily need any But we we'll still need extra classrooms if we are putting Exactly. That that would be a one-off cost. Okay? But looking at the uh, recurring expenditure, it will be it will go down because you might not need boarding facility. Okay? Fantastic. Now, the existing uh, senior high schools like Achimota, like Prempe College, Commercial Academy and the rest, we convert them into tertiary institutions like Institute of Technologies and Okay, University. so you migrate them yeah. to a different location? No, you see, where the, 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 the kid had his or uh, uh, BEC on the same campus, he was going to have the SSE. SSE. So what becomes of the secondary school? Yes, we convert them into uh, universities and polytechnics. Okay. And then will uh, they maintain their names? Oh no, the name you can give any name to it. Maybe uh, Apiame. Even today, you had a uh, uh, one university name after Apiame Canton Apiame So it can be Pokwari University of Pokwari, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Achimota University or whatever. So essentially, we'll have more universities. Exactly. 
we have more universities and polytechnics across the country. Now, uh, aside that, every university or polytechnic in this country will have what they call business incubator. Mm. Well, those with fantastic business ideas will go in there and then they will help them to develop that idea. Okay? Uh, aside that, case So from, every university has a business incubator section. Exactly. Exactly. And then those uh, from primary school up to university, looking at the future jobs, the requirement for future jobs, you need ICT background. So we want to help our kids to learn compulsory computer programming and coding, okay? It will be part of the curriculum. So you have yeah. a focus on STEM. Exactly. And then also uh, looking at uh, those coming up from SHS or BEC, we don't want to continue, okay? Maybe they want to learn a trade. They want to learn seamstress, bakery, whatever. The course associated with that uh, training will be taken care of by the government. The government will pay are, all the costs associated with somebody are, going into that training. Government is incurring a lot of costs. Oh, yes. Because, you see, when you prepare them and they start earning money, they'll pay back. Because mm. you are paying back. So your, your, your plan you are, is the initial you, cost to be high. Exactly. But you are expecting that the cost to... You see, when, if, if I invest $100,000 in you, and then you start working, when you start working, it will take you, let's assume you, I'm giving a, an average age. Let's assume you are 30 years. You have the next 30 years to work. Okay? And that next, next 30 years, you'll be working and then we'll be taking taxes from you for the next 30 years and it will pay off the cost that we've incurred. So it will be taxed to defray no, the No, as, as far as you are working, you pay yes. tax. If you, are, right. if you are making income in okay, the country, okay, okay. So anywhere in the world. The revenue will so come from it, that. it will be better for me to invest in you so that you can start working and making money than allowing you to work on the street. Any no, no. serious government, any serious government will invest in these people. You see, we invest in the people so that they will add value. They will all be productive in society. Okay? Mr. Because Apalu, we, we have to take a, a quick break here, but we'll be back uh, to, to that topic. Uh, we're, you're still watching Spotlight on MX24. We are speaking to Mr. Hassan Ayeriga uh, of the APC and Mr. Kofi Akpalu of the LPG, they have been discussing with us some of their policy interventions that are different from the NDC and the NPP and why their options are more superior. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, the conversation continues. Stay with us. No, this is not business as usual. This is a different kind of business. From the global stock market, to our central bank, to insights on insurance and investment, Spotlight is a show for you. Here, we look beyond the numbers. On Spotlight, we'll tell you the complexity behind the figures. On Spotlight, we examine hardcore financial issues. Join me, Philip Nanfuri, on MX24, together with policymakers and experts, as we talk business. Opinions are like onions. Everybody has one. Abortion is a no-no. As a human being, you must take responsibility for all your actions and inactions. Your misjudgment shouldn't be enough grounds to take a life. No, 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 no. I disagree with you because look, if you do not legalize it, people will go to crack process anyway, who might end up not just kill the baby, but the mother as well. Why should I waste my time joining a long queue under the hot sun to vote for your political party, knowing very well that nothing would be achieved at the end of the day? Something will be achieved. It's your civic responsibility to turn out to vote. Vote and vote for a good leader. Governments need to cater to every graduate, diversify the economy, invest in other sectors. But the government cannot do it all. That is why we need the youth to take up the mantle and set up their own businesses. That is how we we'll create economic viability. Here on Opposing Views, we take your views, my views and the views of the experts and put them in the right context for you, our discerning viewers.
Welcome back to Spotlight. Uh, today we are discussing minority and third party political candidates. We have in the studio uh, Hassan Ayerga of the APC. We have in the studio also uh, Kofi Akwalu of the LPG party. Uh, we've looked at revenue generation, we look at education and roads, and we are continuing the conversation, this time focusing on health. Uh, so I'll take that with you first. Uh, you, 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 you did mention the, the alternative uh, intervention, but is this something that we did not get before we went on the break? Yeah, because I was think, uh, talking about investing in educating people, okay. equipping people, so those who want to go into apprenticeship, we are going to pay for all the costs associated with their training. And when they are done with their training, we also give them loans to start their own businesses. Okay, that's the part we didn't get. We didn't get the yes. loans part. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so that will give them loans to start their own businesses. Because there are a lot of young people out there, they have fantastic ideas that can transform this country. But what they don't have is money to go into that business. Okay, so I've been... Is there, are you going to uh, have a mechanism to determine <coughs> the viability of the business before you invest in it? Because there are a lot of people in Ghana who want people to invest oh, yeah, in their it, businesses. It, it, you see, there are a lot of young men. Sometimes they, they, the person might not be able to explain to you the viability of that business. So that, that's to, what I'm asking. Will you yeah, so, have so a way you of to, determining? You need to sit them down. Okay, you need to sit them down to understand them perfectly. Some people, when you ask them to put them in writing, they cannot produce a very good business plan, okay? But when you sit down with them and then you walk through with them, you'll be able to know exactly who, who, who where... Who do the sitting down? The training institutions uh, or the ministries? Oh, not necessarily the ministry. Agencies will be doing that. Okay. Yeah. Let me hear. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to... Uh, you see... We're looking at health. I, I, I want Mr. Kwanu, you want to respond to him? Yes, I want him to know something. Okay. He likes talking about borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Unfortunately, the previous and the past government has tied all our resources, okay, to borrowing. Our gold, our mining, our bauxite, everything, our oil, everything has been tied to borrowing. So if you talk about borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, which I think nobody goes to walk into a bank and ask the bank to give me money without a collateral security. When he started, he was explaining about the Bank of, uh, the bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana doesn't have money. Our Bank of Ghana doesn't have money. Unless the bank, the Ghana government borrows money, that will now be sent to Bank of Ghana for Bank of Ghana to credit the Bank of Ghana, uh, the, uh, the Ghana government. But Bank of Ghana itself doesn't have $10 billion. They don't have it. Now, secondly, we have tied almost everything, everything of ours by the previous government, the two governments, to borrowing and borrowing. So right now, we do not have credibility when it comes to borrowing. As a nation, we've lost it. That is why the last borrowing we did, the $3 billion, we tied our box side to it. If you remember... So, almost so your point is that your government will not borrow? No, uh, not only my point. I also want him to know this aspect of it. Right. So that w once we are here and we are having discussions, we should understand each other in terms of the things we discuss. Because we are discussing for the people to hear what we have to do. I want to remind him to know that previous government so far has tied all our collateral to borrowing. So we do not have anything that can guarantee us another $10 billion. Uh, Mr. Palu, would you like to respond to that? Because yeah, uh, you see, any moment, any time you mention borrowing, they look at external borrowing. Well, Ghanaians are very wary about uh -huh. borrowing because we you see the moment you mention discussion. The, the moment you mention borrowing, they, their mind is like going to borrow money from World Bank or IMF or whatever. I I don't look at all those things. I look at Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana has the power to create money. Okay, you see. Uh, I'll ask before if you are going to be printing money. No, which you, you, you said see, no. there are two different. Okay, this one. This. There's a limit to money creation. You see this one. I mm. see it. Apart from Ghana, where do you, where can you use this money? Uh, nowhere else, unless you convert it. So this one, the moment I leave it here, somebody will just pick it, mm. okay, and go and use it. But if I drop this in Italy, or UK, or Ireland, nobody will care. Okay, they will think it's a paper. Okay, now, what I want to tell you is the Bank of Ghana controls this. So if 
this is what you call the sovereign money. Sovereign money. This is sovereign money. Now, the, with the sovereign money, the, do you know this money came into existence only when the Kufuado came into being? It became, uh, came. Yes, the, the hundred city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it started in circulation. When, this particular denomination. Do you know, do you know the quantity they, uh, they printed? printed. I, I, I believe we don't know. And I you don't know, I can tell you maybe they printed one trillion pieces of this. So it's hundred trillion. Or one billion pieces of this. You're assuming? Billion. Yes. So because we don't know. Okay. Now, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that Bank of Ghana as a bank can give you a facility, can give the government of Ghana a facility. If a government of Ghana need 10 trillion cities, it has no limits. Okay? So far as we're going to use the money and use it. But you understand on, that these higher denominations were, were printed for high value transactions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What I'm trying to tell you is this one is not even necessary. Bank of Ghana can still give you money with that days because you mean the, the, that is the, why I gave you a scenario whereby the higher denominations were not necessary. Is that what you're it, saying? No, what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not this I'm talking about. I brought in ledger, ledger. You see, okay. when you borrow, anytime you borrow money from bank, the bank creates money, okay. and when they create okay, money, that, that they get. open a loan account for you. That loan account is what they call the ledger, computer money. The money sits on the computer. They just credit your account with that money. Then you can start using the money. When you write a check to the bank, the bank will hand out the check. Okay? So, you, so if I when, can ask you, I'm, 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 I'm coming. So when you, when the bank, of, when bank, Ghana government apply for a loan facility from Bank of Ghana, Bank of Ghana can create a loan account for them because they hold the consolidated accounts. Okay? They can create an account. And then if it's a city denomination, okay? They can use as much as they can. Okay, because let's let's retire. If it's a dollar, if it's a dollar, if it's a dollar, whereby you are using it for external thing, that would have been different thing altogether. But so far as we are using it within local market, okay, Bank of Ghana can give you whatever they want. So far as you Mr. promise, let, let's retire the subject. Let's move on. In and, and, oh, sorry, man, Mr. Iraga brought in something. Let me before I go. Okay. They said there's, there should be a collateral. Okay, collateral. Why collateral? Collateral means that, that to loan, yeah. No. Collateral means that if uh, they want to know, it's a form of security that they're going to pay back the money. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Now, government, when a government owes you, it's more than a security. Okay, it's more than security. Now, if we're going the to use the reputation and credibility, yeah, if, if you are using the money to build housing, okay, if you are going to use the money to build housing, such that our people will not be living in slums, the housing project can now serve as collateral. So, so you're saying that the project that the money will be used for is the collateral? Exactly. Thank you so much. So if, we're, if, we're you moving the road, on. if you use the road, the road will serve as collateral. Mr. Palu, we're moving yeah. on. In 2016, you endorsed the MPP. Let me, yeah. Are you let aligning me. with them? Mr. Iwe, let, let us retire that subject. No, just we'll one move second. On to one other. second, please. <laughs> one second. You see, Bank of Ghana cannot be created money. Bank of Ghana is monitored by the International Voluntary Fund, IMF. So Bank of Ghana has limitations that it can do. We did mention that there's a limit to money creation. Yes, but he's talking about creation and cutting money and doing whatever. Bank of Ghana does not have the power to just the, release yeah. a lot of money into you the see, system. The IMF, the Gentlemen. IMF has come as like a teacher, okay? The IMF is controlling our leaders. They are controlling them simply because they have allowed themselves to be controlled that way. Because let me tell you, Mr. Erika did mention that our, they, debt, they are a development our debt, partner. No, our debt to GDP is uh, 71. Uh, 71%. To me, it's not it's, it's not starter. Seventy-one percent, hundred percent, what there was not starter because America. The, the debt had, level does not matter to you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. America's debt to GDP is hundred and eleven percent. That was where we brought in the sustainability yeah, argument. And, and, and but we are repeating ourselves. Yeah, so let's move and, on. And let me finish. And Japanese debt to GDP is two hundred thirty-seven percent. Two hundred thirty-seven. Mr. Palu, are you aligning with the MPP again in twenty twenty? Because in 2016, ah. you, you endorsed them. No, I endorsed them because Salato said, deny me the opportunity to contest the election. Okay. So are you... you, you no, you, I'm, I'm, I'm in the race. So you and didn't really support race. this year? No, no. Everybody is on his own. Are you okay? My, 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 uh, my, 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 my brother, he's... Uh, because Salato said, denying him the opportunity to contest, he threw his support to John Mahama. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. When also you don't understand politics, if you understand politics, they have what we call collation and collaborations and stuff like that. So, so this year, you're, you're everybody's on the phone. Mr. Ayaga is on the ballot. I'm on the ballot. Everybody's on the ballot. Nana Kufadu is on the ballot. Mama is on the ballot. 
it's up to Ghanaians to go and vote and decide who to be governors. Okay? So if you, for instance, if you go and you vote for me, okay, and then I become president, will I say, oh, uh, no, I don't want it? <laughs> so go and vote for me. Thank, thank you so much. The viewers are listening. I'm no, sure you have to vote for me. You'll be able to convince them at the end of the day. Uh, Mr. Eriga, you also did the same thing for the, the NDC. The question is, uh, out there is a perception that uh, the not. LPG... I did yep, not do yep. that. He, he said you too? Your weight. Yeah, he, he said it. Don't listen to what people say. Listen, I'm here. Are you throwing your weight behind I'm the NDC? Don't listen to what people I'm here. Ask me the question. Are what you throwing your weight behind the NDC? I did not throw my weight to, uh, with the NDC. I mean in 2020. Are you throwing I, your weight behind Are you serious? <laughs> really? Are you serious? I'm contesting an election and you're asking me whether I'm throwing my weight on the NDC. If the election goes into a second who round. Who told you that's going to go well, to a second round? If, if it goes, who told you that qualifier? I'll not be part of the second round? Okay. You see, let's, 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 let's allow everybody the opportunity to win the elections. Nobody goes into an election believing that he's going to lose. He says he's going to win. I say I'm going to win. John Mama says But you know there's a perception out there that some of the minority parties either align with the NDC or the that is, that is people's perception, but I'm here. Let me tell you what I know and what I None know. None of the polls have mentioned no, your, your party. Somebody said They're mentioned. They're yeah, making it opinion polls and you it's want to opinion. Move. That's that his opinion. Look, one. if you sit down today, even if you ask John Mama or you ask President Nana Kufado today, who is going to win, all of them will say they are going to win. But are you sure they're all going to win? That's their opinion. Everybody has varied opinion. But at least but the polls would mention... Uh, no, 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 no. It's what polls? If I sit down in my room... We've had Benefson's poll. Benefson's poll. We, we've had the University only, of Ghana poll. He, he did no, only he, 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 from, I'm sorry, Mr. Ayala. From the same University of Ghana, there are two polls. Okay, two polls. None uh, of them mentions the LPG. Yeah, they mentioned they, 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 as a winner. No, no they, 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 they are saying they are, different things. You see, because university, look, don't let us use psychology to defeat right. to defeat our purpose. Don't allow anybody to use psychology to defeat our purpose. Politicians believe in data and voting. Pastors believe in their prophecies. Opinion polls believe in their op opinion. There are pastors who will come and sit down here and say, oh, tomorrow Hassan Erega is going to win the election. If I have five pastors in this country mentioning Hassan Erega is going to win the election, it will turn the attention of every Ghanaian to vote for Hassan Do you know that? If Pastor Otterbell comes why, out... Why hasn't the, the, the APC released his own poll? I'm coming. If Pastor Otterbell comes out to say Erega is winning, Pastor, Pastor Duncan Williams comes out to say, oh, in my dream I saw Hassan Erega winning the elections, Pastor Obinim comes and says, oh, Nyamich Kachira, Yarega Ben winning election. Pastor, Have you done any internal polls? I'm, I'm coming. I'm telling you something. I want you to know the effect of right. opinion polls and what is the psychological... So you think it's a psychological exercise? Thank you. But the question Even is, the UCG, has, has the APC ever conducted any polls? We have, we have been doing our own thing, region by region. And within the polls... And who, I am telling you, you that predict? any political leader today, I'm mentioning this, who is able to reach the voter beside NDC and MPP, is likely to convince that person 90%. The people, the Ghanaian people out there are tired of NDC and MPP. Within your personal polls, what are your chances? That is, I'm winning? coming to that. You've asked a question, let me learn. Any leader who is able to meet any voter from now onwards, even from last month, two months ago, things are changing by the day. Every day you get to the polls and you convince thousands of people who probably wanted to vote NDC and they didn't see anybody. But right now in my campaign, anywhere I go, I am able to win 90% of the people I speak to. It is a very, very encouraging position for me. How so does more this days, percentage inform the general elections? That is what I'm saying. If I'm able to meet 90% of Ghanaian voters and 100% of Ghanaian voters and I'm winning 10, 90%, what it means is that we are getting to the point that the so people are... in the general election, does it mean the general election... The general election could... could, could, could this year's election is going to have different di dimensions. The NDC and MPP will not get anyone that. And I'm even sh I'll, be, I'll be surprised if two of them are able to get first and second. I'll be shocked. Okay, so... Another party will if, penetrate If neither of them can get first or second, another party will person. penetrate through. Yes. Would that party be APC? Absolutely. Or it could be any other What person. percentage is the uh, uh, APC pe penetrating with? I don't know now. But all I know is that we have... 17 to 18 million voters. 
out of the 17 to 8 million voters, the NDC has a voter population of 4 million to 4.5. MPP has a voter population, the same almost 4 million to 4.5. They, they are all wovering around 9 million. And we have about 8 million Ghanaians who have not decided for the NDC and MPP. We are now speaking to these 8 million Ghanaians. No, even Mr. Zarega, let me correct something. When you ask for MPP, their uh, uh, members, yeah, it will be less than 1 million. And NDC likewise, okay. The previous elections, they they didn't uh, have anybody challenging them, okay, seriously. So that's why maybe Kosin Doom was trying his best, but he didn't do much. He couldn't do much, okay. Now 2020 elections, a new ball game. Like Mr. Erega said, I can sit here and tell you that this election, huh, it will be is going for the second round. The first you, one. You, you're predicting a second round yes. for the election. Yes. Yes. The Nobody first of you. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> me to me, I know Kufado will be first. I will be second. And Mahama will be third. So you're not going to be the winner. That's what you're saying. No. That's you're the first one. Kufado will be first. That you'll is be second, the first Mahama one. That is the first one. And I'm the second round. You, the second round, I will win by 70%. Amazing. I'm the next president of this country. I will Amazing. win the elections. Mr. But president. The next president me. of this country has and no I, parliamentary this, presence. This, this, my, your, this, your my, this my man no... here. This my man here. How, you, you will be sure this my man here will be my staff. How will you control policy when the parliament has no members for no, the party? Uh, we have three arms of government. Okay. We have the judiciary, the legislature, the executive. MPP, who, who are their reps in are the judiciary? NDC, who are their reps at the judiciary? And there is no part of government. So it doesn't matter. Benny, uh, you have money was an independent candidate. He ruled for two times. So it doesn't matter. Parliament, yeah, we can have 50%, MPP, 50%, whatever. I don't give a damn. But should you matters focus is that, on improving your presence in Parliament? No, let me tell you something. Don't forget, Parliament is a legislature. I was talking you. and then he took it. And he took, it. took over. So I'm only telling you, continue his uh, assertion. Parliament really only passes laws. Yeah. But the president, if he's talking about development, is the president and the, uh, what do you call it, MCEs and the DCs. They are the people who are responsible for development. Last week, we had a, an Irish research report. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, there are three uh, PhDs, uh, doctors, who released a report on the elections. Uh, from their perspective, there's no third party or independent candidate that is going to make it uh, to the finals. Not first, not second position. In yeah. fact, they say let, it's a foregone. Uh, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you. You still, you still don't understand the issue of uh, opinion polls. Opinion polls are not proper polls. Go to the village. Oh, you think the Irish research? They use data what is from Irish? previous Where elections. They, they compile the data. data from so if they use data from previous elections, how many people contested the previous elections? How many candidates were they? This as compared to this, what was the Assumptions and the opinions of people as at then has compared today. What was the development in the minds of the people as at then has compared to? Ghanaians are tired of NDC and MPP as we speak. Wherever you go, the first thing they tell you, you're bread. You're bread NDC, you do your bread MPP. So you see, I was telling you something, but you are not listening to what I was trying to I'm explain. Listening, I just have to All engage. I want you to understand is that anybody, it could be anybody for, within, among the two political parties, except NDC and MPP. The 10 parties, anybody who is able to meet any voter as of now is likely to change him 90%. Because they are waiting. They are tired and sitting now waiting for another person to come beside NDC and MPP. So they themselves are yearning to make a change. For change. Yes, but they are not seeing the other parties coming. That is what I've seen when I've gone around. I've been around. I just came this morning, 3 a.m. If you look at me, you can see that I'm tired. I've been out there for one month. I didn't lie on my... my All right, but your closing remarks. So, I, my closing remark is coming. But I want you to know, let us not be hyping NDC and MPP against the minority. When we do that... It's a competition. And it's, no, no, when we do that, we are giving them the... Traction. The, thank you. And that is why over the years, I, before we came, I was chatting with Mr. Akpalu, and I was telling him that we need to also get our own TV and radio station. Because the media attention is always on NDC and MPP. Because you they are have here, them. which means attention they is on bought, you too. They have bought the, me, the media houses. They bought NDC. NDC bought media platforms. MPP has there. So they are giving them enough attention. 
We those who do not have our own platform, we only get opportunities when you people call us or we do on social media. Oh, we're running out of time. Your closing remarks. My closing remark is that um, as we go to 7 December, I know many of you are tired of voting in this and MPP and you want a change. The change is here. Ghanaians, the MPP will tell you and then they say, if you vote for Hassan Erega, you are wasting your vote. But you've wasted enough vote on them and you haven't seen development. You've wasted enough vote on MPP and NDC. You do not have roads. You don't have gardens. You don't have water. You don't have electricity. You don't have hospitals. You don't have cleaning. You don't have schools. For 30, 30 something years, you've been wasting this vote. This time around, let's try APC and Hassan Erega. Let's waste, hashtag, waste that vote on Hassan Erega. Number seven on the seventh of December. And let's see the change Hassan Erega is going to bring. As for the NDC and the MPP, we have to drop them. Thank you so Kofi much. Kofi said that Nana is coming first. Let me tell him that <laughs> it won't happen. Mm -hmm. We'll see who Thank you first. so much. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Kualu, what, what are your closing remarks, please? We're yeah. running out of time. Actually, uh, when I become president, every child in this country below 18 years will receive a child benefit of 200 cities every month. And then those above 18 years who are unemployed will receive unemployment benefit. Uh, those who have never even worked before, they receive income support. And uh, we're going to make sure we build a $10 billion job fund so that young men and young women out there who want to go into business can raise capital from that fund to start their own businesses. Because the agenda is that we want to create 1 million new entrepreneurs by 2024. Thank I'm number so eight. Much. I'm number eight <clears throat> on the ballot. And number eight means the new beginning. And it's also the prophetic number, the angelic number. So when you see a dream, go and vote. When the angels touches you, go and vote. Okay? Because remember, number eight is Jesus Christ number. Thank and you David so much. David was number eight. That is sounds of Thank uh, you so yes. much, Mr. Kwalu. Thank you to you, the viewer at home. You have just watched Spotlight, uh, the current affairs edition. We have spoken to the LPG, uh, Mr. Kofi Akwalu. We have also spoken to the APC of Hassan Ayariga. Have they succeeded in convincing you to vote number seven or number eight? We'll find out on December 7th. Thank you for watching. My name is Nwong Falong. Join us on Wednesday for a gender policy debate.